Hello, hello, hello. Back from Mexico to rip some big boards in search of the $200,000 grand prize. Going to be ripping five big boards on Underdog Fantasy today. Let's get it, gang. Welcome. My name is Liam Murphy, a several time best ball champion. We are gearing up for draft here. I was wondering why my screen was not working there. Forgive me, we're having a little bit of tech problems here. Okay. So I am in the next five drafts. This first draft, we need four people left to get this draft kicked off here. Yeah, I don't I don't know what happened. I went to Mexico. My clock is all messed up. I lost my voice a little bit. As long time listeners would know. All I do know though is if you enjoy this content, we are on the road to 5K. Help me out. What is up? The draft kicks off very soon. Um, a week and a day away, so eight days away from the draft starting. I'm excited. You know, I you know I've been reading some mocks. I put out a tweet using uh, logic that hey, the Commanders and I talked about this on stream. The Commanders they signed. Marcus Mariota, to me, why do you do that? You do that because you're targeting Jaden Daniels at number two. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, no, you, sh you shouldn't read into that. Marcus Mariota could back up anyone. I mean, Marcus Mariota just backed up Jalen Hurts, right? So I think he's a good mentor for Jaden Daniels, theoretically. Now, Drake May is mobile, but... I'm seeing more and more Jaden Daniels mocked as number two overall. So we'll have to see how that goes. I am the 106 this morning. Longtime listeners know last year in the golf best ball, the Albatross, I took third. Defended my title, got 50 bullets in there with some overlay. So didn't didn't max it. Got um I think 20 or so through, maybe more with overlay. So we'll have to see how that goes. We'll chart the golf throughout the summer. But we got some teams. I'm excited. I've been working on some articles for my site. Plan to launch that, you know. As close to as I can, the launch of BBM5. We'll have some great streams as well. Some big guest streams, as I always do. There are four more drafts if you want to draft with me. So help me fill them. The contest is... 95% filled? I run the clock here at the 106. Um, yeah, Justin Jefferson, a very easy pick for me there. Resol's fine, but so some other guys, but I, you know, I think it's the best pick. A moment here. What was I doing? Yeah. So the big board is 95.7% filled. So this could be my last big board stream. I don't know. Um, so if the top of the draft goes Caleb Williams 1, 
Jaden Daniels two. Now you got the Patriots on the clock. I read one mock that had the Pats selecting J.J. McCarthy and not Drake May. And then the Vikings ended up getting Drake May. I read another mock that had the Giants trading up and selecting McCarthy. And the Vikings got screwed on quarterback. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you guys for being here. You know, this ADP is feeling a bit right at the top of the draft. I would have Jamar. I think you could take Jamar at the 101. The only, you know, zero questions for me on him. The only questions would be Joe Burrow's health. Um, Tyreek and CMC. We don't have questions per se. It's just kind of like, when will these guys lose a step? Is it this year? Probably not. Jamar could get less target competition, whereas CeeDee Lamb could get more. And Jefferson, of course, is the QB questions. I'll give these... 10 minutes to fill, and then I might have to uh, leave some of them. The last stream I did, I just uh, exited out instead of leaving by accident, and so I auto-drafted nearly a full one. Did not end up well. Um, you can go anywhere here, but I do want to get some. Jonathan Taylor usually has a higher ADP. JT, of course, was on my winning BBM2 team. Him besides Anthony Richardson, you know, it's in some ways you're kind of hoping for a, what we're hoping. He's he's the Derrick Henry thesis, but he's on the Colts, you know, in the sense that you're hoping the offense is real good and you're hoping that JT either explosively runs or falls into a bunch of red zone touchdowns. And he should be able to do that. But there will be seasons where Richardson gets hurt. Could help JT. There will be seasons where Richardson, you know, dominates red zone touchdowns. So Derrick Henry, 2-3 turn. I think that's unusual by ADP. But some people want to get their running backs. If someone like Neighbors goes to the Giants, I do wonder what will happen to that ADP. And it's, and it's Daniel Jones. So we're on the clock here. Um, pick 30. We could go Josh Allen. We could go Mike Evans, who I'm kind of tempted to do that. I like ETN. I like all the wideouts, Hertz and Laporta even. But today, we'll just be an ADP hound. Big Mike, you don't have too many questions on. You know, pretty unlikely the man significantly will have slowed down from where he was. Mainly because he's not the fastest guy in the world already. And I guess, I guess it's possible that like Chris Godwin was pretty banged up and you know, Chris Godwin played off injury, and maybe he's healthier. But, I mean, the, the connection between him and Baker was pretty electric. Should Mike, Will, Mike Evans 
go, maybe I said Mike Williams. Should Mike Evans go after a wide receiver too in Jalen Waddle? Should he go after a maybe wide receiver too in Nico and Steph Diggs? Should he go after a maybe wide receiver too in Debo and Ayuk? I don't know. Of course, if Nico breaks a leg and it's just Steph Diggs, we'd prefer that strongly to Mike Evans, I think. Same thing with Ayuk and Samuel injuries, but we're mainly just searching for spike weeks. And in the half point PPR site, hard to pass on Mike Evans. You know, a clear wideout two and Devonta Smith goes real close to Mike Evans, who's just a wideout one on an offense we don't love. I would say the same thing about DK Metcalf. Metcalf is clearly the one in Seattle to me. Drafts are slow filling. We need six more for our second draft. I think a lot of people have, have done their draft, so... May not be enough, uh, you know, there's not, not a whole badge brigade in here with me. One guy is in all these drafts with me. I'm assuming it's wakey, wakey auto drafting. Seeing as he just took the whole timer there and took the highest guy ADP. Um, okay. Rasheed Rice rightfully has fallen. Let's say Kelsey. I've drafted way more McBride, Kincaid, Pitts, Kittle, Ingram, Bowers even. I don't have as much Kelsey. Um, but yeah, I. a lot of people were like very confident, like, hey, Rasheed Rice, it's, hey, it's Jordan Addison, it's Hollywood Brown, big deal. I think it feels quite a bit different to have I mean, footage of this dude being a jackass and fleeing the scene. Um, he did get charged in some things. So. I don't know. Is it possible he gets slapped with just the one game ban? Sure. Is it possible he gets slapped with a zero game ban? Yes. Is it possible the Chiefs take wide out round one and round two because... They have like Hollywood Brown on a one-year contract. They don't know about Rasheed Rice. Apparently off-field concerns is a big thing for him. Uh, Kelsey, probably his last year, right? Also, yes. So, Yeah, there is some love for Rome as even wide out one, wide out two. I think we'll go Mahomes having Kelsey here. I did win the the DraftKings 555 one year with the Mahomes Kelsey stack. Only did it once. And, I mean, Mahomes versus Lamar. It's not really clear what the market is doing to me because I think the market is just, like, extrapolating what Lamar did against the Dolphins and being like, well, that was a high ceiling. Got to take him. But, you know, over the past several years, Mahomes has unquestionably been a more elite quarterback than Lamar in fantasy football. Lamar may have some games where he gives you 40 fantasy points, but if you're asking for which quarterback gives you 25, 30 point games more often, that's Mahomes to me. Lamar, he's like an elite quarterback, but you got to you got to almost take three quarterbacks with him. Because so many times Gus Edwards, now Derrick Henry, 
right? Like it's not it's not a like what this guy's doing, just like full Ravens offense. I'm gonna bet it's gonna be hard to advance teams like that. Just can only have so many touchdowns. Not to mention you're not getting the full Ravens offense with Mark Andrews. Am I going to draft any NBA playoff? I'm thinking about it, Samaki. I don't usually. I might have an NBA guy on. Maybe I'll have one of the badge bros on. Um, but no. It's not top of mind. I would like to just kind of draft away, but I want to like launch a site providing a lot of value so that we can be the top drafting site out there. I got a lot, a lot of plans to make that happen. Second draft filled. I am the 101, of course. Drafting against Yield Fates. Yeah, this guy clearly auto-drafting. Let's see if he's in this one with me, too. Yeah, he is. So I caught an auto drafter. Um, okay. Yeah, I got no problems with Brian Thomas. He's his landing spot is really wide where we want him to be a Bill, a Cowboy a chief, a Jaguar. We don't want him to be, you know, a giant, a, let's go chase one-on-one. My one-on-one last year, Jamar Chase worked out for a while. Um, let me do this. Yeah, you don't want Brian Thomas to be. I mean, I don't think a Broncos likely, but sure. I don't think you know, like the Colts getting another wide out is an interesting one to me because we're expecting this RPO offense where you kind of like their top target, you like their running back, you like their quarterback. If it's not a target dominant wide receiver, and they're kind of like souped up Alec Pierce. I don't know how you math that with Anthony Richardson. Them to be a stealer. You don't want them to be like the third guy in Miami, but Miami lost so many guys, I don't think it's likely they go wide out. So most of the landing spots are positive, though, for the rookies. Yeah, you are not excited at all if he's a stealer. Good morning, YouTube member. Bindles, what's going on, brother? All right, we're back on the clock here. Jordan Addison has fallen a full round, and I'm kind of iffy on him too, but like he, why are we iffy on Jordan Addison? Well, because the man's son ran touchdowns, right? Like, I don't know. Have you guys watched the games? Like the, the 49ers game, just so many games where he got long touchdowns attached to Kirk Cousins. And um, obviously Kirk's gone. <clears throat> we'll have to see who their quarterback is, but I'm going to try to get someone I think could be the Vikings quarterback having Jefferson and Addison. I do not hate Watson. I like Adonai Mitchell quite a bit too, who <clears throat> Mitchell I think is viewed closer to Brian Thomas Jr., then the market is projecting where he could be five more for this next draft, by the way. He could very easily um, go mid 20s, just as I, yeah, someone, maybe someone's listening. They take him at 80. And I think that's the right spot for him, right? Like, I think Adonai Mitchell could jump Deontay for sure. I think Adonai Mitchell could draft, jump Chris Godwin for sure. I think he could jump Jaden Reed. I think, you know, like I don't really know what Jaden Reed's doing up here. I think he could jump 
the most of those other guys probably not but i mean mitchell mitchell is a jaguar a bill a cowboy there's gonna be a lot of positive steam for that whether there should be or not i love mike williams but he's a tougher click compared to a rookie There's a lot of steam about Mitchell to the Bills. Should be a really interesting draft where, you know, I had Davis on <clears throat> originally the top rookies. And when I had him on months ago, you know, a month ago, whatever, at the time, I think the prevailing opinion was like, there's one quarter, there's, there's three quarterbacks worth taking in the first. Then all of a sudden it was like, no, for sure we're getting four with McCarthy and now I'm hearing five which five quarterbacks going in the first is a great recipe for fantasy football in the sense that those later teams those teams that are already playoff teams those teams get some really high quality players to fall to them if that happens right where that you know now the wide receivers are more likely to be a bill they're more likely to be a cowboy Aaron asking is there a non draft capital reason to like AD Mitchell overworthy I mean I'm not enough of a college ball guy to fully give that one um I like both of those guys a lot and I am going to take worthy here um I like Kyler too but you know, with us having Mahomes will pass. But, you know, I don't really feel any concerns about Worthy's size. However, I think that is a reason alone right there. Adonai Mitchell looks like a fucking shit brick house, and Xavier Worthy, you know, looks like a middle schooler. So that alone could do some things. Um, I do think he'll be really productive, and I do think the chances of him being a um with chase here let's do nico and we'll do neighbors and just praise not a giant. Um, third one filled, and I am the 104. Yeah, and clearly wakey. If you volume draft, you should always like. How did I know that there was going to be an auto, maybe an auto drafter in here with me? Because every time I won in one, there was it was two out of whatever. So I mean, maybe he's not auto drafting, but I think he is. Which it's it's. Good to take note of that on a site like Underdog compared to a regular site because on a regular site, it's very clear who's on auto draft unless they do the DK thing where they make their avatar the auto drafting logo. Um, but on Underdog, it's not. So you don't really know if someone is auto drafting for sure. Okay, pick 102. Not an offense we like, but I like betting on the Javante Williams resurgence here. Just like, you know, boring team. Same division, though. Um, Broncos are not a great roster, but, you know, they're going to have some games where they get some get some touchdowns. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know enough college ball to be like, oh, Mitchell does this better, Worthy does this better. But, I mean, let's just pull up a picture of these two dudes. Boom. Here's your reason right here. Look at that. I do think the chances of Worthy landing up in a spot we love is high. Like, if Worthy gets round one love, which it seems like he is getting um, potential end of round one love, 
That's the Bills. That's the Chiefs. That's the Cowboys. Let's take Jamar again at the 104. I think Jamar is an extra good pick because his quarterback is also mispriced. There is, again, zero reasons why Joe Burrow should be like in this tier, guys, and pretty far from this tier. None. So. Like, if you did nothing but just kind of take Jamar, make sure you got Burrow at ADP for 150 bullets, I think you're building some plus EV teams. Two more people for this next draft here. Thank you for telling me the FBI is off your case. You have legally spoke up. Yeah, I mean, with the Mahomes, getting guys like Brian Thomas, Xavier, um, Mitchell, if he was available. I guess he was. Maybe that could have been a, a tie break of going Mitchell over Addison is the chance Mahomes gets one of these guys is pretty decent. Like, I don't think it's a as much of a lock. Chiefs go round one wide out, but... It's pretty likely, especially depending on how they feel on Rasheed Rice. Okay. Yeah, so I was in a bachelor party. That's why I did no uh, streams. Lost my voice a little bit. Maybe you could tell. Had a great time. We did a snorkel trip one day. I think I, you know... Probably average 10 beers a day, which I'm not, you know, I drink, but I'm not an everyday drinker or anything worth close to it. So we had some down bad people on the trip, but it was a great time. We'll take Jonathan Brooks here. Uh, yeah, I love betting on Benson and like Benson and Brooks, who seem like the most likely guys to be the the first running backs off the board. Really love paying a round nine, round 10 price tag on those guys. I mean, that's kind of like what happened to Jonathan Taylor, his rookie season, where now that was more because um, I can't even remember this running back's name, but there was some running back who tore his Achilles that year that made him cheap. And also like best ball drafts back then were like the least sharp thing I've ever seen in my life. Um. But the point is, you could look back on this season and be like, why the F, F was I taking the old geriatric running backs, guys like Moster, Jones, Kamara, over the young rookies? I run the clock here. Um, yeah, I love a Cook White double tap as my first two running backs. Over here, let's go Debo. Yeah, let's go Devo. This is probably one of my favorite ways to start a draft. Three wideouts, and then your first two running backs are two running backs you like a lot and can easily outscore the Derrick Henrys, the ETNs, whatever. Marlon Mack, thank you for uh, remembering, reminding me, I mean. Um, all right. We're back on the clock here. Let's go Tajay Spears. Like I, I like Pollard a little bit more, but I think both those running backs should have explosive opportunities and times when they're touting the rock. And, you know, we got some firepower wide out. At the 105, let's get a Tyreek team. Probably the highest individual ceiling 
in all of fantasy football. Um, the Cowboys did sign Royce Freeman, which is like, in some ways, a puzzling signing. In many ways, in other ways, maybe it it tips their hand a little bit that they're like looking to sign a big boy like a Braylon Allen, right? Like I couldn't think of many better mentors out there. Um, Royce Freeman typically is not signed by any team until like, I don't know, week seven, (laughs) you know? But yeah, if you're a, a big board drafter, the ADP will change a lot. Um, so we won Mike Evans a couple times. I like Josh Jacobs too, but let's get a Josh team in there. Get an elite quarterback one. Do need five more people for my last draft, my fifth draft to kick off here. Hmm. Wakey is auto leaned, so. Assuming he's going to take Troy Franklin, unless he has different ranks in there. No, he he maybe he does have rankings in there. Or maybe he he drafted that guy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I read a lot of mixed opinions on Troy Franklin, most of them negative, honestly. But I'm going to take him. Because the, the knock on him is that, or what he does well, is he's fast, which we like. And it seems like he will be uh, round, round three or higher, which is also good. Um, the knock on him, like I, I read today, something like he doesn't fight through contact. He doesn't track the belt, the ball well, which that's a problem, right? Like if you're fast and they're throwing you the ball and you can't track it, that's, that's not good. Um, some other things like that. However, him just being fast, like, I could see that being a, you know, if the Chiefs do not go wide out round one, seems like that's possibly a landing spot. Or something like Buffalo, like maybe Buffalo goes a different body type in round one, and then they get their, you know, Troy Franklin as like a cheap Xavier Worthy attempt. Okay, back on the clock here. So this team, we are going to go Joe Burrow, obviously, for one of our picks with Jamar. And I like both the tight ends, but we're going to go Hopkins because we know we know wide out goes gross. I'm going to go Ayuk with Tyreek. I'm going to take Keon Coleman. Pulled the 102 for our fifth draft today. Um, Keon Coleman, I really got to see how the draft capital comes in. But, like, half the time he's mocked round one, round two. I think he's, like, a little slow or something. I don't know. I don't know why so many people hate on him. Maybe it's justified. But groupthink is wrong all the time. Let's go Rome. I think the Rome-Josh pairing is pretty solid because of the big three wideouts. Um... If Buffalo trades up for one, Rome feels the most attainable, assuming he goes 
Um, third. I'm seeing some mocks that are like nonsensical. Like I, I saw CBS mock where it was like the Dolphins and the Bills trade round one. Very unlikely. Like, like it, does this writer even understand divisions? And then also I saw a mock that had the Bears trading down from the 109 for future picks, which like all the all the talk is about. Um, we'll take CMC this time. All the talk is about how, oh, the Bears could trade down because they want more picks this year, and they only have four picks this year. And so tra trading down to get a future pick doesn't do a lot for this year. Okay, pick 29. Let's go ETN. ETN, I feel sim like a pretty similar way as Chiron, where I understand why the market has them where they do, but they could outperform their draft capital by a full round, meaning Chiron could be one of the top four best players in all fantasy football. And... Um, ETN could perform far more like a, you know, like, you know, you could be like, oh, what was I doing taking Michael Pittman Jr. over ETN? Really depends how touchdowns break down. Guys like James Cook and Rashad White, part of the gamble of taking them right now is they have to avoid, or they don't have to, but Will they avoid competition in the draft? So this team has our double. Pitts back to 52. All right, fine. We're going to take, I was going to, um, try to take a Viking quarterback here, but Baker, a bit past ADP, having Mike Evans as well, feels fine. And, I mean, the only guy there is J.J. McCarthy. But the Mah the year I won with Mahomes, I was a Geno Smith teammate, so Baker is a little bit of synergy there. Go Trey Benson. And man, Nick Chubb is just such a wide range. We will go big Mike. Rumored to be ready round one. I part of the problem with Mike Williams is the Jets feel like a very likely team to add a a weapon. Mainly Brock Bowers or um, someone like Rome. I'm not always going to go too tight end with Kelsey. Partially because he's so cheap. And partially because he's not as much as a week-to-week -week consistency guy in the regular season. Let's go Roshan. A 
partner up Debo and CMC. Let's do the Josh and Joe. Pick 69. Hello. How you doing, Stefan? Like you used to like if you wanted to do Josh and Joe last year, that was a two three investment. This year, it's like a late third and early seventh, which for the production you're gonna get is more than fair. Let's go, Steph Diggs this time. I'm not 100% confident Diggs should be so far ahead of Tank, but we'll just market it for now. Pick 44. Wow. I, these top two guys I like a lot, both Cup and Tank. I'm going to go Tank this time. I think both those guys could way outperform their ADP. Maybe signed. Oh no. These guys double stack too. I'll take Brock Bowers this time. Possible Bengal. Juwan as a second tight end with Kelsey feels pretty good. Tight end dries up pretty quickly after that. And we know, you know, Juwan, former wide receiver, can have some weeks. Feeling pretty balanced here. I don't really feel forced to do anything on on these teams, on that team. We'll go Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk's probably like a walking 160 points at minimum. GM Ben, GM. Rise and grind, up dog. Little Jacksonville stack there. It feels pretty likely the Jags. I see I see corner mock to the Jags a lot, but wide out also feels pretty likely. Come here, Puma. All right, what do we want to do here? I think we'll take Singletary. Or will we? So at least take Chase Brown. Now the question is, yeah, I mean, I want a Singletary, but I feel like quarterback dries up even more. So... I'm going to take Jaden Daniels just to be done at QB. Like going from Jaden Daniels down to like Baker, Stafford, Rodgers versus Singletary to a, 
I don't know. Marshawn Lloyd. Take Keaton Mitchell here. Well past ADP. No idea if he'll play the year, but I think I have enough points to support him taking his time. And love his weekly ceiling if he does get back. Ah. Gotta get up to let my cat out of the office. Kind words, fantasy dog. This guy is a genius. Give it a like. All right. Let's go Jalen Warren. I've always been a Jalen Warren guy. He was also on my winning 555 team. That helps. I'm going to go McBride this time. Fancy Dog said, I tried doing two drafts at once and failed horribly, just saying. Yeah, it takes a little bit of an adjustment. Man, this is a question of our of the year. Thoughts on JSN this season? I think you should take some. Um, I'm going to go. Like, I like Amari Cooper, but I like CJ Stroud, but I'm going to go Rashad White again. If White escapes a Trey Benson, a Jonathan Brooks, anyone else to push him, it's like a walking 220 points at least. JSN, you know, I think it's unlikely he takes such a step that unless he was, like, going through something that was just, like, not reported, um, I think it's unlikely he takes such a step that he's, like, a screaming value. I also think it's likely that he'll give you some weeks. Um, we'll go Kyle Pitts here. I love that range of Kincaid, Pitts, Kittle in the draft. But I also think, you know, I don't know, at least a, a 6% type of player where tier two, of course, if Lockett or Metcalf got hurt, that could boost him. All right, let's see here. I'm going to take Jatavian Sanders. I'll take Curtis Samuel on the Josh Allen team. So I did triple tight end with Kelsey. Um, Sanders get a little docked because he's not as, as, as athletic as people hoped, but he is still, you know, he's probably, he's at least like Dalton Schultz athletic, I think. Mm -hmm. One of the most annoying things about the Raz is if you do not spell their name exactly, you don't get the profile. So give me a second on that one. Um, let's see here. This team. I think this is a good spot to take Brandon Cooks, even though, oh, we're on the clock again. Let's take Luke Muxgrave. On our Pitts team, let's go Ramondre as our RB2. Okay. 
So Morgan Jatavian Sanders at a 561 overall Raz, but what I care about more is their their speed metrics. So Schultz at 244. Uh Jatavian's 245. Schultz is a little bit taller than Sanders. Sanders ran a 469. Schultz ran a 475. 10 yard split of 164 for Schultz and a 16 for Sanders. So and keep in mind the the Raz is uh, relative, meaning maybe Schultz is lower in the database now. All right, we got two more guys here we're going to add. Just going to go running back wide out. Um, let's take a swing on Damian Pierce. It's not a guy I draft a lot, but could be traded. Could just be, you know, a better fit in the system this year. Pretty unlikely as a third-year player, he's just like into obscurity now. We'll leave this on the wideout tab. Um. So yeah, yeah. So the Schultz was a he was a seven point one six back in twenty eighteen. He could be lower now as more tight ends hit the database. Um, we didn't get the three cone on Sanders, and that is what Schultz excelled at. We did get bad vertical jumps and broad jumps, but like those are two of the workouts I care the least about. Um, don't care at all about your bench either. I don't really care about your height or weight or, you know, your hand size and arm length. That matters a little bit. But the point is his speed numbers for Sanders are pretty solid. Solid enough where I could see him, you know, what many people felt he would be the tight end two of the class. Probably a third round pick still. But, you know, if he goes in the sixth round of the draft, forget about him. I don't think Addison should be going ahead of Hopkins, so I'm going to take Hopkins. The double elite quarterback feels good until you get to the point where you need some guys. Let's go Khalil Shakir and just, no, we'll take Myers actually. Take Myers. He's a, whatever, he's solid points. Probably can get Shakir the next round. I'm going to take Evan Ingram and be done at tight end. A little division opponent of the Titans, too. Here we need a wide out, and we're going to go Luke McCaffrey this time. We are pick 92. Yeah, I'm fine going double elite tight end again with Nujoku. Kind of like the texture of a Pitts Nujoku team too, where Pitts, you know, I'm expecting him to be healthy, but still the way I think he'll, it will be a lot of like down the field. Games, whereas Nujoku will have some games with a lot of targets. All right, we'll go Hunter Henry. It's kind of like a boring tight end. And 
and let's go Isaiah Likely. Double tap tight end here. Likely and Musgrave give you a squint of upside. Henry, you know, I'll have some games with some touchdowns. Might as well take Shakir here. Getting stacking partners of Josh and Joe. Pick 101. I'm going to go to uh, I was tempted to go Tua and Brock, which, you know, having Tyreek, you just kind of, Tyreek will drag Tua across the fantasy finishing line. It's always tempting to, like, take the, the skill player you like the best, like a Zemir White there or Nick Chubb. Because, you know, if the theory of a Zamir White or Nick Chubb hits, they're probably a lot more valuable than a quarterback. But at the same time, it's a bit of a trap if you never take quarterback, right? If you keep doing that, you probably won't get a quarterback. You won't get your stacking partners. And so you just got to bite the bullet eventually. Five more picks over here. Bit more than that over here. I don't know who Ben Sanat is, but I do know some dude was like, uh, I don't know, the Penn State dude, I think, was an athletic freak. So we'll have to see where he goes. I like to think of myself as a bit of a tight end whisperer. Typically get solid value at that position late in drafts. Just the only thing to change. Maybe this guy is an auto drafting, but he's got Josh and Kincaid, Hertz, and Goddard. On the other hand, he's taking every single second. Just like, please put these guys on auto draft. I do not see the reason why we can't do that. ESPN does that, for God's sakes. Okay. I'm going to take Ford instead of Charbonnet because, you know, not having a ton of running backs right now, I feel like that team needs running back production early in the season. Kyler is an easy choice on a Trey McBride team, needing the quarterback past ADP. Um, but, yeah, I think Charbonnet is more of a hope that Something happens to Ken Walker or um, he's just more involved in the offense where Ford, I have a feeling, will have good production right out of the gate. And I think that team might need it. All right, what are we doing over here? Mainly running back and wide out. Jermaine Burton gets some love. Ugh, running back is gross already. I 
on the clock here too. Uh, let's go Purdy. And I'm going to grab Trevor here. Me having Kirk and ETN. Auto draft Will Shipley. I queued him, but. Let's go Marshawn Lloyd. Just hope he gets the draft capital. We added Burton and Shipley. This is a fun start, having Kyler and Brock with CMC, Debo, and Trey McBride. Feel good enough at QB to stop at two there, too. Javon Baker is your favorite wideout sleeper. Why is that, Paul? I was debating him there, or maybe I took him. I forget. Fancy Dog says, nerves of an Old West gunslinger. Yeah, I think uh, playing bullet chess helps with that, where when you can play a full chess game in a minute and you have 30 seconds just to make one pick, you feel good. Let's go Blake Corum. I think he's also in the mix to be first running back selected. Where, I mean, could be Cowboys. Going double, double elite quarterback and one of the elite price tight ends doesn't always feel the best. But, you know, okay, maybe I'm thin at wide receiver three, four, five, or uh, four, five, six right now. However, if Chase, Debo, and Rome hit enough, that lessens it. And then you feel a little thin at running back at the same time. <laughs> so this is a wild conspiracy theory. Ben says, I think the whole NFL has a handshake deal in place for quorum at 69 to the Chargers, which is among the best opportunity locations. Yeah, it's like there's a lot of, a lot of steam there. Um, I am going to take KDOT in first just because tight end feels gross. And I like a bunch of these running backs enough and I'm hoping enough, hoping one of those guys will at least be there for me. Okay. 
This team just needs running backs and wide outs. Let's go Singletary. Good old boring Singletary. Probably at worst will be a 1B. Go Demarcus Robinson and Dylan Lobby. UNH grad. I did grow up in New Hampshire, so we're loyal there. I think he makes a lot of sense for the Chiefs, too. Um, we'll go Gabe, too. Gabe should be another five, six, seven touchdowns. You know, two of those could come in a single game. I'll take Charbonnet this time. And Braylon Allen. Works for me. I like Rico, too. Ben adds on to his conspiracy, says, the betting odds for which team picks a third-round guy with the Chargers being plus 175 are incredibly askew. Something has to be up. Yeah, I mean, I get it, but at the same time, that could just be a group of idiots being like, he played for Harbaugh. Harbaugh spoke well about him. I mean, you got to dodge a lot of other teams. Unless the Chargers are reaching at least a full round, compared to how most people rank the player, it doesn't seem likely. Not to mention the Chargers roster needs a lot of help. And so investing a high pick in a running back, even if that's like their philosophy, is not good. So one more left on this team. Which I think I'll just throw in wide out. Could do running back too. But in theory, Cook, White, and Benson should be RB1s on their team. And then maybe Brown is. And then you got two other guys. Four wide out ones, four twos to threes. Let's go, Michael Wilson. I might add a third quarterback with Tua and Trevor, two guys who have like okay ish weekly ceilings, but also pretty high floors um, as a group. But I don't feel forced to. He's got to thread the needle of them putting up like 20, 25, 30 in the playoffs. Alan Gator says, Harbaugh can build through the trenches and grab Donovan Edwards next year, who I assume is a running back. I mean, yeah, to grab your running back, like, if you're Harbaugh, and let's assume you think you are at least one year away from having a serious shot at getting to the Super Bowl, and let's assume, again, you do want to do, he wants to run the ball. Like, let's just assume all that's true. Well, then it's putting the, you know, 
there is a lot of credence to the thought of how, why don't you get the the O line, the rest of the pieces you need. Don't put a bunch of touches on a rookie running back and get your running back in the future. All right, we heard some Javon Baker love earlier. We'll add him again. I'm going to add Charlie Jones instead of Asovius. I think he was drafted ahead of him. Take Jahan Dotson here. I think Jahan Dotson like could be a sneaky trade candidate too. Like a team like Buffalo or or uh, the Chiefs, the Jaguars, whatever. Saying, hey, if you want to get rid of him, we'll take our shot. Let's go, Michael Wilson. Seeing as we have Kyler. Uh, no, Harbaugh will not be viewed as the greatest coach of all time, even if he wins the Super Bowl. I'm assuming you're a Chargers fan to ask that. I'm going to go estimate. Running back rooms coming in here. These rookies are either total busts of a draft pick for fantasy or some solid value. Let's go Roman Wilson. I think he'll be a second round pick, maybe a third. I draft Will Shipley. I don't I don't really have love for any of these rookie running backs until I see how their landing spot and draft capital comes down. But at the current point in time, am I drafting him some? Yes. Thanks for tuning in. If you've made it this far, please hit the like button. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. Click that little bell so you get notified when I go live. If you're not a member of my Discord, the link to join that is in the YouTube description below. I always not notify when I go live on stream there. If you want to not miss any drafts, as draft season starts to pick up and if you're watching this on replay write something in the comments all interaction helps something like wow great video but don't, don't let me put words in your mouth now
Not these comments. I mean the, the comments when the video ends. But that also helps, Dylan. Thank you, man. <laughs> to be clear, though, my wow had an exclamation point. I mean, Slayton, I've been... I try to take Slayton every time. Slayton is just a, you know, a walking six touchdowns. He's like cheap Gabe Davis. I think he's mispriced, but we'll have to see what happens in the draft there. Kendrick Bourne, I feel, you know, I understand you lumping him in there. I don't quite feel that way about him as well. Let's go Roshan. Hope to get Zay as a stack. Um, I'm going to go Tyler Algier, who I know is a two, versus Braylon Allen, who maybe is a two, maybe is a three. <laughs> Hell yeah, Dylan. He says, I got a copy and pasted and ready to paste it so hard when this video ends. Um, what's going on on this team? Three more picks. Let's go to Marcus Robinson. And this time we'll go Rico. Instead of Braylon Allen. Which there's opin opinions are mixed on Braylon. Uh, I messed up. I thought this team was way closer to the turn, just because I guess most of my other ones are. So maybe I should have taken Zay instead of Roshan if I was looking for that stack. Yeah, man, there's a lot of people hating on Gabe Davis, but I agree. I mean, Trevor is a good deep ball thrower. He just barely missed Calvin, uh, Calvin Ridley on like a bunch of touchdowns. Probably should not go as late as he does. At the same time, I could see Darius Slayton producing very similar to him. It was free, you know? Rico is at least the two. Yeah, I agree with that. That's what I was saying. Braylon is the guy who maybe he's a two, maybe he's a three. Maybe he is a one. All right, we're going to grab Lobby first. And I will grab a third tight end. And just hope Chase, Debo are hitting the lineup most weeks, plus some ancillary production. Although I might just live with two tight ends and go another wide out. Will Disley is not a receiving tight end. So no to that. I'll take Malachi here. Third round, second round buzz. Will Disley feels like the guy who, you know, like Jatavian Sanders is going to land there. And Michael Mayer will Disley eventually. Is Knox more interesting at his late value with Diggs gone, or does it not matter and just more Kincaid? 
Knox to me is a guy who you're just kind of hoping falls in the end zone, which for a lot of tight ends is a pretty similar bet. Um, no, I do not think it significantly increases Knox's value. I do think Knox is draftable on Josh Allen teams, so I'll consider taking him here. Um, but no, like, yeah, I don't, I think it's possible the Bills run more 12 personnel, but I mean, Knox is more of the blocking tight end. He's a bit of a yak guy, yards after catch. He has been in a red zone target before. I would say Gabe Davis leaving is more bullish for Knox, where it's like you no longer have that tall guy. So it's conceivable Dawson gets some of those uh, reps. But no, like obviously it helps Kincaid more, and it's going to help whatever rookie and or trade they make. But no, I would not remove Diggs' like target share and paste that onto Knox. I'm going to go Roshan and be done at running back over there. Ray, Data, Ray Davis has got decent testing numbers. I think Darren Waller is a fine guy to take occasionally too. Um, all right, Rashad Bateman, fool me thrice, fool on me, but maybe you're healthy this time. And we'll take Knox as our third tight end, because why not? Just hope those touchdowns land some some good weeks. Um, these streams took a little bit to fill, so I might have to cut this stream here, and I'll just have to catch you and finish these out um, with me queuing them. But thanks, everybody, for tuning in today. I don't know when my next stream will be, and the draft is next week. So maybe I'll have one later this week. Maybe I'll have one early next week. I am going to end the stream here, unfortunately. I'll catch you guys up on those teams next time. I'm excited. The draft is here. I'm going to be writing a lot. I'm going to be locked away. And let's get it, gang. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.